This video will discuss energy minimization in computational chemistry. So we were discussing our potential energy function and the potential energy gradient in the previous video. So we might imagine we have some potential energy function V of X, where our uh, structural coordinate is X that we can vary. And then our energy as a result is this kind of purple function here. So any place where the derivative of or first derivative of the potential energy with respect to that coordinate is equal to zero is what we would call a stationary point or in calculus what you would call a critical point for a one dimensional function. So in this case, based off of the second derivative value, we would classify that as one of these types of critical points. So if the second derivative was positive, then the curvature is upward from there, where our uh, first derivative is zero. That's what you would call a local minimum. If the potential, if the second derivative is negative, then the curvature is concave downward, and we have what we call a local maximum at that critical point or stationary point there. And if the second derivative equals zero, like in this case, or in other kinds of situations, uh, it's unknown. You could have a minimum, a maximum. You could also have what you call a uh, saddle point or a transition point. Uh, lots of names for a situation where it's uh, the slope is zero, but it is neither a, neither a maximum nor a minimum. Okay, so that is what happens in one dimension, but typically in computational chemistry, we have atoms. Atoms have X, Y, Z coordinates for every, sorry, we have uh, molecules or molecular systems. Each atom has an X, Y, Z coordinate, and if there are N atoms, we have three N coordinates. So as discussed in that video, the analog of the first derivative of X equaling zero in one dimension would be the magnitude of our gradient vector, kind of the first derivative in all dimensions, that, that's zero in every dimension. The second derivative being greater than zero, being the criterion for a local minimum in one dimension. That's uh, quite a bit more complicated in multiple dimensions. You have what's called uh, this matrix called the Hessian matrix, where the, uh, the elements of that matrix, H, I, J, are the uh, second mixed partial derivatives with respect to all of your molecular coordinates. So you can imagine, you know, x1, y1, z1, x2, y2, z2, etc. for these qi and qj. You have a 3n by 3n matrix with 3n squared elements of all of those mixed partial derivatives of all those second derivatives with respect to uh, second derivatives of the, of the potential with respect to those coordinates. So that's called the Hessian matrix. And the criteria for it being a local minimum is that all of the eigenvalues of that Hessian matrix are going to be greater than or equal to zero. If you need a reminder about matrices or eigenvalues, uh, take a look at the math review playlist uh, for those videos. Okay, so if we see that we have a situation where our gradient, the magnitude of the gradient vector is zero, and we have a Hessian where all of our eigenvalues are positive numbers, then what we have is a local minimum. And if you are the lowest value of potential energy among all local minima, then you are what is called the global minimum. So for example, in this function, if these were the only two minima in the function, then these each are local minima because they are kind of the lowest point in their respective regions. But this point here is the global minimum in addition to being a local minimum. So oftentimes in chemistry or other applications, you're trying to find various local and or global minimum energy structures of your molecule. So the, stru the structures where you have the lowest potential energy. All right, so um, the procedure which we call geometry optimization is basically to use an algorithm, or which is usually coded up in some computer program, use some algorithm to find all of the coordinates of the molecule with the minimum potential energy. So for example, I'm gonna take a look here, once again in my computational chemistry repository from GitHub, which I have cloned into a Jupyter notebook here locally. So if you go into the data directory down to opt, you'll see the results of the simulation, which I'm about to run here. Um, so 
in the notebook directory, I'm running this script, so we're running scripts molecular mechanics opt.py, where once again, as in every case, if I run it without any arguments, shift enter, it wants an optimization file for energy minimization. So I'm going to go up one directory, go to input, tab opt, tab helium20.opt. And this one doesn't generate a lot of uh, command line output, so that's not very interesting. I um, probably want to show you that uh, input file as well, if we can take a look at that, if this will load quickly enough. These things have a tendency not to load quickly whenever they are under the pressure to perform during filming, so we shall see. All right, opt, and then we're going to go to helium20.opt. Basically just an input file that I made from there saying that's where the molecule is that I want. Uh, the type is called steepest descent, which I talk about in the next video. Default criteria as far as the values of... Uh, the values of the gradient magnitude convergence, energy convergence that I have, maximum number of iterations, and where the output's going to go. So one output file is the uh, result of the energy as we're going here along the various trajectories. What's the uh, maximum element in the gradient? What's the root mean squared of the gradient? How far am I displacing my atoms? What's the root maximum and root mean squared of that? How much is my energy changing? Are all these converged to within the criteria I've specified? Then as we go, the energy goes down, blah, blah, blah. And hopefully in a reasonable number of iterations, this is quite a large number of iterations, but I have eventually reached where all five of these criteria have been starred, indicating that I've reached convergence. So the output of this program was to uh, put a trajectory, which is a bunch of XYZ files uh, concatenated at one after another of the various iterations of the procedure all the way down to the last one. So I can load this file in VMD and actually watch a trajectory movie of this. As we start out in kind of this uh, just randomly oriented uh, molecule that I started out with, and I want this to collapse down to a minimum energy structure. It's not guaranteed to collapse to a global minimum, but it will give me a local minimum if it completes. Okay, so let's play. So initially you see all the molecules kind of clustering up as the heliums are interacting through non-bonded forces. They prefer to be at their van der Waals radius to one another, kind of clumped into this nice big globule. So that goes, and then it eventually uh, gets down into where they're pretty much just a bunch of close-packed spheres. All right, so that's the final geometry of that. That is an optimized local minimum. It's not the global minimum. The global minimum would be whatever is the kind of best, most spherical kind of glob they could clump into. But this is a uh, much better low-energy structure that we could use for as a starting place for some simulation uh, under the right circumstances.